Well, after coming up with all sorts of designs this week, we're going back to basics. And I'm going to bring you back with me so we can see how I would build a basic Raspberry Pi case. Let's get started. Well, I figured if I'm going back to basics, I might as well bring you guys with me and show you how I would design a basic Pi case. So this project, like pretty much all of my other Pi cases, is going to start out with a model of a pre-made Raspberry Pi. In this case, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. So in Fusion 360, we have the option to do what's called an offset by pressing O. When we do an offset, we can then select something that's already in the project, click on it, and then tell it how far we want to offset from that item. So we need to make enough of an offset off of the pie to allow the pie to slide in and also to create the walls. I want to do 1.2 millimeter thick walls, and I want to allow at least 0.2 millimeters all the way around the pie. So we're going to go with an offset of 1.6. As you can see, it extended it out and I now have an outline around my Pi. So then I can select the face that I've just created, which is this 2D drawing, and also select the Pi itself so that we have a solid object, and then right click, do press pull. Press pull allows us to take a 2D drawing that we've done and push it into three dimensions. I want this to be 1.2 millimeters thick, and if I were to create it as is, it attaches it right to the bottom of the pie. But I want enough space that I can have screw mounts underneath it and allow for proper airflow. So instead, we're going to change the start from profile plane to offset plane, and we're going to offset it five millimeters from the bottom of the pie. As you can see, if we then click here, there is now a five millimeters clearance in between the pie and the plate that we've just created. We'll click OK, and we now have the beginnings of our pie case. The top and the bottom at this point are going to be very similar until we add walls. So the next step I'm going to do is right click on our new body. We're going to do move copy. We'll switch the move copy option to bodies because this is a body. This is something that we've created as a body. We'll then select our new body. We'll switch this to the slider method. And we're going to want to create a copy because I want to make a lid for the box that we're working on. So I'll select create copy. And from there, we drag it across and you'll see we've now created a second one. I'm going to rotate around to the other side because I want to make sure that this lid will in fact clear the USB ports and ethernet on this side. And we'll just bring it up just enough that we have the clearance that we need. If you zoom in, you can actually make more finite movements of this. The closer you get to it, the less it moves with each click. And that should be just fine. Okay, so now we have a top and a bottom, but we need a box. So if I once again select the bottom and press the O for offset, then we take the outer perimeter, and as I said before, we're going to do 1.2 millimeter walls. Now we want this to be interior, meaning instead of extending out from the box, we want it to move inside. So I'm going to put a minus 1.2, and you'll see that that creates an inner outline. So we'll accept that. So we're then going to right click on the new face that we've created, do a press pull, and then instead of dragging it like we did last time to extend it, we're going to change distance to to object. And then we're going to select our lid as the object to extend to. Now, one thing you'll want to do is change your operation from join to new body. Otherwise, it's going to merge your top, your bottom, and your sides into a box that you have no way of opening. We'll click OK. And now we have a top and a bottom for our case. And we can make that disappear just by checking and unchecking the bodies. Now we're going to want to combine the walls and the bottom into one piece. So we'll click on Modify, Combine. 
and then select the pieces that we want to put together. So in this case, our walls and our base. Make sure that your operation is set to join. And there you have it. So you think, oh, well, we're pretty close to being done, but there's one thing that our Pi is hiding. There's actually no holes in this case that allow you to access the ports. So the next thing we're going to do is hide the lid and bring our Pi back. And we're going to use the combine feature again, except for this time, we're going to use the cut function. So if we do combine, select our box, and then change the operation to cut, we can then go around our Pi, select all of the items on it that we need access to from the outside, and click OK. Now if we hide our Pi again, you'll see there are cutouts wherever the Pi made contact with the box. And as you can see, I've actually missed the Ethernet port, so let's bring our Pi back, do a modify combine, and repeat the process and make sure we don't leave the Ethernet port out this time. Much better. Now, the only problem with this method is that this doesn't allow us any tolerances. Each of these ports is modeled in the design to be pretty close to how big they are in real life, but unfortunately that means that there's no wiggle room when you're putting it together. So we need to go add some tolerances into this case design. So let's bring our base back and let's hide our Pi and let's get back to using the offset command. So I want an offset around these USB ports. I like to do 0.6 usually and make sure that it's on the outside, not on the inside. Now, one of the other issues we'll run into is that the edge of this USB port is actually off the side. So if we do an offset of here, what you're going to see is it's actually creating an outline of the entire interior here. So you can see it's got an outline around the Ethernet and the outline around the USB. So I'll start off by creating that particular offset. We'll click OK. And then I'm going to take a look by using the rectangle tool as to how big the hole is for the USB port over here. So you can see the width is 14.354. I'm going to repeat that width over here. So we'll do 14.354. And now we have an offset that should be functional for us. What I'm actually going to do is eliminate this piece of plastic that would be in between the USB ports as well, so that we don't have to worry about this piece of plastic getting broken off as we're trying to insert the Pi. Finally, we need to do the same type of thing for the Ethernet port. Uh, this one here, again, does not have the Ethernet coming out on the square part, which means that our offset doesn't include it. So we're just going to extend off of here. In this case here, I'm just going to eyeball it, get it relatively close. And since I want the top of the Ethernet to be on the lid, I'll actually just create a rectangle off the top as well. Now is the part we need to make sure that we get all of our pieces selected. So all the parts that we don't want to be in the final design, we'll go through and select. And then using press pull, we'll drag it back through the case, which you can see automatically turns this into a cut operation, and click OK. And now we have holes for our Ethernet and USB. So we're going to repeat the same type of process using the offset command over on the side where our analog audio, dual HDMI, and USB-C connectors are. And with a 0.6 millimeter offset, we should now have plenty of space to be able to wiggle our ports in where they need. So the next thing we need to do is create posts that will allow us to support our Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom of the Pi as the example. And I'll start off by creating a 2.25 millimeter circle at the middle of each of these holes. So we're going to be using 2.4 millimeter screws, but we need enough plastic that these screws can thread into it. So by doing 2.25, that gives us an extra 0.15 that will allow us to create the threads for these screws. 
I'm going to add another circle around that, which will be six millimeters, and that's going to be the thickness of our post. So we'll go ahead and add these to each of these, and then we're going to extrude them. And with all four of them selected, we'll do a right click, press pull. Now I'm going to hide my case. Bring the pie back, rotate around so I can see the bottom of the pie, and then we'll change this once again to two object, and select the bottom of the pie. Now we can bring our box back, which will allow us to join those posts to the bottom, and press OK. And with that, the bottom of our design is complete. We now have posts for the screws to go through and spaces for the pie ports to be accessible. So then we're going to repeat the process for creating the posts on the top so that we can screw the two halves of the case together. And there we have it, a top and a bottom for our pie case that we can then use 2.4 millimeter screws to put together. So this would protect your pie just fine. It doesn't allow for a lot of airflow or anything like that, but if you're looking for a simple pie case, well, this should do it. But I'm not done here. I'm going to make some more modifications to it, and we'll jump to the final version of the case, and we'll see if you can guess how I made those modifications and if you can do those modifications to your own design. And here's my finalized simple pie design case. So as you can see, I've added ventilation for a 30 millimeter fan with three millimeter screws. I've created a punch out so that if you need access to the GPIO, well, you can cut the little tabs and then have access to it. And the other thing I've done is made it so that the screws aren't necessary for this case to actually hold it together. If we hide the container section, you can actually see that I have created these tabs that feed into corresponding holes on the bottom of the case and allow it to basically snap together and press fit. So let's go ahead and jump to the printed version of this case and see how we did. And here we have our completed, very simple Raspberry Pi case. It's printed in a nice light blue from eSun and I really like the way it turned out. It's nice and clean, the ports turned out just the way I wanted them to, and it looks like it should absolutely be perfect. And in fact, if we take our pie, we should be able to just slide it into place. Again, we have to flex out around that analog port as we often do have to with these cases, and then it slides right in. So I thought we'd gotten this case just about perfect, but unfortunately there is one glaring omission that I missed when designing it. There's no way to install our micro SD card. Without a micro SD card, well, this Pi isn't going to be much use at all. And there isn't enough space in the case to even have it permanently installed since when the card is installed, it sticks out the back. So let's go ahead, pull the Pi back out, get rid of this, and bring in version two. So this was printed in some purple PLA that I just had sort of lying around. It's more of a magenta color. And uh, the only real change is I've added a hole for the micro SD card. So now if we install our Pi, and it snaps in there just nicely, we can then install our micro SD card in the back. And I've given it enough space around that you can then get your fingernail in there and pull it back out if need be. Well, with that, we can take the lid, which I didn't reprint because I in fact like the way the two colors go together, line it up and snap it together. And that friction fit holds it pretty well. Is it gonna come off but potentially if it's in a backpack and getting jostled around? Well, it might, but with the extra screw holes that we've added, you can then screw it together to get it to hold together tightly and you don't have to worry about that happening. And that's it. We have a nice, simple, clean looking pie case that does exactly what it needs to and basically nothing more. If you need access to your GPIO, well, you can clip the little tabs, pull this out, and you have access to the full thing. And gnarly 80 colors aside, 
I really couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. The case is clean, it's exactly what you need, it does exactly what it's supposed to, and nothing more. Even then, we were able to sneak in some additional features, like a spot for proper cooling, and a panel we can pop out for the GPIO. I'm also happy with the way the press fit fits. It's enough to hold it together if it's on your desk, and uh, it'll probably even withstand being tossed into a backpack. If, of course, you don't find the snaps doing their job, well, you can just put some screws in it and hold it together permanently. Alright, well that's it for this week, so tune in next week when we'll have another brand new design, and until then, stay creative.